Hello. So, today we will uh, continue our discussion on computer networks and internet protocols. Today we will be uh, studying or studying our couple of uh, lectures uh, on IP routing. So, uh, already you have uh, seen that uh, how a application layer in our OSI or TCP IP model works. You, you have already looked into several transport layer uh, protocols and also the basics of IP, IP layer protocols. So, IP as such is uh, IP layer or it is also known as the network layer is primarily responsible for forwarding packet from one network to another right. So, it is uh, if we look at the internet which is a network of networks. So, the IP layer is primarily responsible for connecting the two, two or two or more different network across the thing. Now, one major aspect of this uh, I uh, of this particular uh, forwarding thing is that how the packet will be forwarded across the global uh, internet right. So, internet as such we have seen uh, having uh, truly speaking that uh, millions of systems thousands of routers and so and so forth right. So, how a packet from one to another it will be getting forwarded like if I if you from your system if you are typing www.iitkgpsc.in then the iitkgp page gets displayed on your screen. So, how your request comes up to this iitkgp web server and then iitkgp web server replies back to your systems right. So, if you are requesting from from a far network. So, how it will go on hopping to through this router. So, if you if we imagine a, uh, a overall internet or not imagine if we look at the overall inter uh, internet. So, if there are several networks and there are a routers which connects these networks right. So, routers are responsible for uh, for forwarding packets from one network to another network and type of things. So, if there are multiple uh, hops are required the router should be responsible for doing that right. So, today uh, or from uh, coming couple of uh, lectures we will be discussing or different forwarding mechanisms how the how the packets are getting forwarded from one network to another network to another network till then the destination host uh, is reached right. So, uh, if we uh, look at we will be primarily looking at following things IP addresses and address allocation already you have gone through that we will quickly brush up on the things and we will start looking at packet forwarding uh, or routing or there are uh, we will say forwarding table or routing table will be little bit interchangeably using the tables which are looked at the in the router and there is another concept whenever we come into play that is the longest prefix match sometime uh, LPM forwarding right. So, longest prefix match and uh, we will be primarily referring this uh, uh, in the in whole whole of this uh, lectures or series of lectures we will be primarily referring uh, some of the uh, books and reference note and reference reference materials and uh, of as mentioned there and as we have mentioned in our earlier slides also right. So, IP address is a already uh, all of us or uh, you know that it is it is typically uh, when we as of now we are talking about IPv4 all our dealing of this routing will be primarily based on IPv4. So, it is a 32 bit address with uh, every uh, 8 bit dot 8 bit dot 8 bit dot 8 bit right and it uniquely identifies a particular machine logically a, uh, logically a, a provide a logical address to a particular systems which is connected in the internet. In other sense we can say that a two uh, systems on the same uh, on, on this network cannot have to same IP address then it will not be able to identify those uniquely right. But there are way out still we are having those type of things that will come slowly, but nevertheless we think that this is a logical address which goes to the things. Later on uh, in this uh, particular course we will look at 
uh, another type of addressing what we say physical or MAC address which comes with the uh, your network interface card. Right? So, that is the address by which uh, by, by the system is identified. So, but this is logically able to identify the systems. So, this IP address is typically provided by the system system admin or in some cases are provided through some other mechanism like DHCP and type of things. Right? So, uh, uniquely it identifies an interface on a host on a router uh, that is a interface right. So, where where the thing where the network is connected represented by dotted quad notation right this is known fact and uh, any everything in the thing uh, everything in the system or the uh, is represented by binary. So, if it is 14 30 by 1 58 15 it is represented by like this right. Now, if we look at inter networking, so used to connect networks together, not primarily networks. So, there are several networks which are connected together. So, we need say way to address a network or group of host, right. Like I say that I require IIT Kharagpur as a network. In inside IIT Kharagpur, I may have different sub networks like say uh, center of educational technology may have a network, uh, computer science engi and engineering uh, can be a network administration of IIT card book can be network and like that right. And uh, so, there are several uh, networks and in other way we need a way to address this network also right. That means, if I am if I am going from one one network to another I should be able to know that uh, know that I uh, address of the network. As we have uh, discussed at the previous uh, lectures uh, initial lectures. Uh, like uh, so this network layer is the is responsible for routing that means for uh, for forwarding packet from one network to another right or we say that in other words these routers are having that layer 3 capability or it can see packet up to layer 3 or network layer in tcp ip uh, model right so we have physical layer mac layer and then or data link layer and then the layer 3 and router can look at the uh, layer 3 capability. So, it can it can look into the uh, network to network communication right. So, here also we, we can say this is a typical one LAN having some host, this is another LAN having another host and there can be bunch of uh, routers and we can say this is a something in the internet networking or sometimes we say there is a wide area network. Uh, but nevertheless what we require that different routers which hop allows me to connect that. There can be 3, 1, uh, n number of routers which allows to the connect to the network right and there can be different other networks which are counted to the network. So, the every router has a some interfaces right sometimes uh, we represent by the serial port of this router 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 slash like this type of representation we will see some of those. But nevertheless, that router has interfaces. Every interfaces connects, uh, connect allows it to connect to another router or another network in the things, right? So the one major is challenges in uh, any system is the uh, scalability, right? Like uh, one way of uh, looking at this router is that the router knows router somewhere or other knows that if I get a packet from say host A to host B to be forwarded A to B or C say A to B or C to D to be forwarded. So, uh, the router knows that if from here it is generated then where it should be forwarded which router to be forwarded then from where it is to be forwarded and so and so forth. That means, there should be somewhere a what we say a some sort of a lookup table router looks at a table and see that oh this is the packet. So, forward this to the things right. The problem becomes that any any system added uh, or other sense deleted from any of the network needs to be again the routing table needs to be updated across the all network all all routers across the world. Uh, otherwise, it will not be able to forward packets right. So, there should be some mechanisms that we will see slowly that how to forward these packets from one uh, one to other. Now, if we holistically try to look at a router is primarily a uh, it gets something from one interface 
looks at the destination where it should go, consults its some some table or some information and say now you go to that to this uh, particular through this channel right. Or in other sense if I try to make an analogy like I want to go from here to say Nasik and then try to go if a major corner I ask that traffic fellow now I want to go to this uh, Nasik this near then which way you go he has some information that in order to go that it has to follow this path then go and meet the at the next traffic person and who will redirect etc. So, it has some information which allows it to route it. So, what we what in other sense what we say these are the router maintains a table uh, which is called routing or sometimes forwarding table which allows to forward these things to the destination right. And uh, this how this table will be constructed how this table will be maintained that is a another challenge, but nevertheless having this table will be pretty large considering even considering the number of networks and routers and in the our internet networking. And as we understand this is very dynamic because we do not have any control uh, or there, there cannot be a overall centralized control that how, man, how many networks etcetera there and not only that there can be more systems coming in going out more network being generated. So, it becomes a major challenge in in uh, uh, in the in routing the packets right. So, every router needs to needs lot of information and to know how to direct packets towards the host. So, divide the network into host portion is the first thing what we have seen right. So, if I if I have uh, so have some hierarchical sort of things or I, I divide that it is a host portion and a sorry network portion and by a host portion right uh, that already you uh, already you know that there is a uh, net mask which allows that if I mask it and then. So, net mask is a mask which followed by a it, it is also a 32 bit uh, number or 32 bit uh, um, address where it follows by a series of 1 and then a series of zeros. So, there cannot be uh, in between 0 1 type of things right. So, it is series of 1 followed by things it mask it and whatever it mask it out it is the network address right. So, like here what we say 24 bit address slash 24 representation. So, the first 3 3 octet they represent that uh, network or the 24 bit network and rest is the host of the things right. And if you try to look at something analogy with our uh, postal mail system also we have different category of the things right. We have uh, say uh, country, state, district, city, then maybe a area location and then the house address and type of things right. So, if I want to mask that whatever is for uh, West Bengal say West Bengal India I can mask it and segregate. I can say Kharagpur, West Bengal, India segregate, then IIT campus, Kharagpur and type of things and so and so forth. So, it depends on that how, so it is there is some rough, so I what we can say I can approach the problem in a hierarchical way, right. So, I can make a hierarchy that a given address, so this is the network access and type of things. Right, and this is typically a mask of 25 bit and if I mask it out and you get that IP address that already you have seen right. So, uh, in other sense we have improved some sort of a scalability like I can say that this is I identify that particular with respect to a network address and now with the LAN 2 uh, if this was the way it was the table was maintained in this router that uh, this way incoming with 24 bit whoever is matching will be coming here or going out. So, in the LAN 2 if I add, add a new host. So, you does not require adding a new forwarding entry in the, into the table. So, it now does not address host by host, but address a network. So, this network what we see is 5670 uh, slash 24. So, it is a net network address is with 24 bit mask and if I add something like this I do not require that all these routing things uh, individual routers across the world need to be changed. Still it is in the same network. In other sense this 
this way of representation allows me to identify a particular network through a identifier right so i mask it and they, this this network has this network address and forward that and then rest is the host address will be inside the thing right now uh, so this is this way we can look at uh, some way of addressing the scalability issues and then if you look at the IP address allocation again you have uh, gone through that uh, uh, you know those things, but just to again to brush off. So, one is that we have some fixed address allocation or we say class full addressing right like uh, class A address uh, which starts with a uh, 0 and star class B address 1 0 rest anything after that class C address 110 there are two other one is for multicast group another is a reserved for future use right these two other addressing schemes are there these are class full addressing addressing mechanisms or in this case we have a uh, very large block of uh, slash 8 the network number of network is less whereas the number of host are much much larger whereas in class b it is slash 16 so it is somewhere it is something large uh, number of networks are with slash with for 16 bit representation and rest are with the number of host and 24 is where number of host in these organizations are much less that 8 bit is there and there are two multicast things so uh, as as we know that this type of addressing or which addressing you will choose based on that what sort of uh, requirement you are having at the at your organization level right. And then we have also seen that classless interdomain uh, routing where instead of this class full we represent by an IP mask right of uh, any variable length again followed by ones and then zeros like here we say that one uh, 12.4.0.0 .0 with a mask of slash uh, 15 and can be like this. So, that first 15 bit it represent the address and the rest represent the host like here what we see right. So, may not be the figure fitting properly, but first 15 bit and the rest is on the host side. And in other sense if we can see that if I get a this sort of things then I can go on dividing them into uh, different uh, subnets right or sub networking in other way we can have a better manageability of the things in a hierarchical fashion right. So, prefixes are key to the internet scalability challenge address allocated in contiguous chunks prefixes routing protocols and packet forwarding based on this prefixes. So, the while while we route we route between these addresses. So, I can have different hierarchy of uh, this sort of mechanisms right and this this is the uh, and I, I can manage IP in a the whole IP things in a better way. Not only that our I can manage the routing information or the routing table or the forwarding table in the router in a much efficient way right. Otherwise, I need to have all the things into the things uh, like think of uh, again uh, not may not be very strong analogy with the postal, but think of that I have to keep every post office need to keep individual address of rest of the world or even rest of India right. So, if I want to send a message to x y z at uh, somewhere Nasik, then I need to know that who where to send instead I divide it that uh, I if I am sending something to IIT Kharagpur. So, it is a state of West Bengal then uh, district a particular district then particular uh, city then particular area of that city and then the thing. So, I divide into into different uh, stuff. So, similarly here also we have that type of uh, uh, we, we can divide them into this sort of things. The these are already already you have you have uh, studied in your IP address allocation etcetera, but we can utilize this phenomena for our routing. So, uh, so we can have aggregation of the things like if there are these these different networks, then I can have a aggregated network. So, I have 
2.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
uh, huge uh, number of devices or network connected devices in place. This is a major challenge and we have IPv6 and so and so forth already you know a overview of the things. Uh, so, there is a there are several long term solution of IPv6 and short term we can have private addressing scheme right. This IP addresses private addresses are not route non routable addresses like 10 dot start dot start dot star this type of addresses are non routable. So, within the thing. So, I can have some mechanisms called network address translator which translate to a public IP and goes and type of things. There are there are way to dynamically allocate uh, addresses that you know that DHCP type of things. So, those are solutions which are available on the IPv4. So, there are uh, several other challenges in the IP related that how much address space for geographic region, address space portability whether you carry over the address space, keeping the address registry up to date there are several challenges there are what we say so called quote unquote hard problems which are people are looking at uh, work it. Now, if we with this context if we try to look at that packet forwarding. So, what we try to say that each router or layer 3 enabled devices which connect networks has a uh, has some informations or forwarding or routing table which maps destination address. So, router what it is getting a address for the destination like if I say www dot iit kgp dot ac dot in from this particular machine or iit uh, www nptl dot in mtl dot ac dot in from this machine it goes to the nearest router and it looks the router gets a uh, destination as uh, nptl dot ac dot in and it tries to find out that where this IP is there either the information should be with him or it should know that where should be my next stop. Right. Nevertheless, it, it takes up it looks at the lookup table or what we say forwarding table or routing table and sees that what is the next stop. So, the router in other sense has to maintain this table right anything it gets in one interface check the table and send that appropriate interface right. If it is not in that table, so there is a concept of default route if it is not finding on the table by default it will add to that particular interface right. So, upon receiving inspects the destination IP address in the header, uh, index into the table, determine the outgoing interface, forward the packet to the interface right and they are in some situation it can change the uh, some update the header that will come later right. The next router in the path repeats the thing. So, it goes on hopping, 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 hopping like that right. So, it checks and go to the uh, through the hop like here it uh, gets gets a if the router forwards a as per IP match destination incoming packets forward the table entry to determine the outgoing interface. So, it goes on forwarding the uh, table one after another right here uh, slash 24 is the IP uh, is the uh, mask. So, that means it gets that first 24 bits is the network. So, if gets uh, if it gets a packet like this 1.3.24 it forwards out here this or it gets that 5.6.7.0 slash 24 that if the, the this is the network address is forward here right. Now, I can have separate entry uh, for class full type of address each router had an entry per class full prefixes the mixture of a b c addresses depends on the first couple of bits on the destination as we have seen uh, in the class full addresses. So, identify the mask automatically from the address like if it is bit is 0 the mask is slash 8, uh, 1 0 mask is slash 16 and uh, 1 1 0 the mask is slash 24 right. Look at the forwarding table of the match and then it goes on the onto the things right. Now, CIDR complicates the issue right uh, because now it has any type of mask right. So, CIDR allows efficient use of the limited address space that is absolutely fine the address space is not wasted or or I should say efficiently used, but makes the packet forwarding much complicated right. Forwarding the forwarding table can have uh, many matches like 
2010.00/21 can have more than one matches so where it will forward so that is a challenge so the policy it is followed is the uh, your longest prefix match so where the longest prefix is matched there it is for forwarded right so like here in this case it needs to be forwarded at 201.6.0 because that is the longest prefix which match whereas others can have a much less prefix uh, uh, that is there is the longest prefix which matches right so that that way it takes uh, takes care of the thing right so forwarding table in ip router so map each ip prefix to the next hop or links destination based forwarding packets as a destination address right so when i am i am sending a packet the packet has a destination address so when i am saying www.itnptel.ac.in so www.ac.in has a after dns resolution ip which is the destination ip for my packet the router identifies the longest matching prefix and uh, some algorithms uh, should have to be uh, lo look up on the things right so routing and forwarding table so i have that destination addresses and it goes on to the lookup tables now it is what it does it does a maximum prefix match so though this up to 1201.10 and these these are both are matching but the maximum prefix match says that the other destination uh, this need to be forwarded out to that 10.201.10. 6.0 right and which is connected to serial 0 or some uh, particular interface of the router outgoing interface of the router. So, now that is the longest prefix match algorithm uh, is uh, may be uh, as or a simple or complicated that is a major challenge because that it is a major, major time. So, the router may have a uh, huge number of entries like the scan and forwarding table one entry at a time may take a huge uh, time into the thing. So, that, that it requires some better algorithm to handle this like there can be huge entries like 2 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh entries into the overall entries and looking at in a linear time will take a huge time whereas, the packets are being pumped into the router may be every nanosecond right. So, it is it is huge number of things need to be processed. So, we need to have a better algorithm to find out this how this longest prefix match can be done. So, that is a major challenge. So, these days it is hardwired it is handled to the hardware. So, one uh, very uh, traditional way of or uh, looking at it is this uh, patricia tree where it is in this case it is a binary where you have 0 and 1 and type of thing. So, 1 bit for each level of tree some nodes correspond to varied prefixes which have next of interfaced on the in a table. So, wherever the match goes it goes on, but uh, in some cases it may not be very efficient because the tree can be uh, skewed and large number of entries can be there and type of things that we can have a some faster lookup by having instead of binary KRE type of tree where things can be there uh, much uh, faster lookups. And these days or we use there are use of special hardware like content addressable memory scams also looks up at the creed rather than the flat type of addressing uh, in looking at the things right. So, these are there are efficient technologies look to look at, but the basic philosophy it is need to search that longest uh, prefix match right where it needs to be forwarded. Now, where do the forwarding uh, tables come from? Uh, so, routers have forwarding tables may map prefix to the outgoing links. So, how do these forwarding table are where it will come? Either it can have a some sort of a static entry and type of things right. So, it says that map so and so to this particular serial port, but this is uh, is may not be adaptable right to failures new devices added new devi uh, devices taken out then the you need to intervene right and in some cases there are issues of load balancing right so there are they are then the the concept of routing protocols come into play that how this 
packets how how do you update this appropriately uh, how do you update this efficiently this forwarding tables or the routing tables so that uh, so, that packets are forwarded. So, these are called routing protocols. We will look into these routing protocols in our subsequent lectures and the protocols which are being routed through these particular things what we say it is a routed protocols. Right? So, we are primarily interested in this routing protocols this is how these tables are will be generated so that uh, the packets can be forwarded. Right? And uh, packets forwarded by the forwarding uh, packets forwarded by uh, there is a typo forwarded by the end devices or the host like. So, at, at what we are having at our end is the uh, ethernet link this machine has some RJ45 connection to the cable to the next things. So, PC with ethernet links laptops with wireless links does not need to run a routing protocols right it forward to that particular particular uh, local or the next stop whatever the gateway is defined into the things right. So, packet to the external host to a particular gateway where this gateway is defined it is defined in my own TCP IP properties or the network uh, setup and how this information is learned that where the gate are and where to forward that is either it is static static uh, statically it has learned my admi system administrator told that you configure like this or there can be a DCP type or, or dynamic uh, host configuration protocol that which allows me to dynamically configure this protocol string to be there. And uh, finally, how this packet is delivered at the end host. So, uh, at the end finally, we will see subsequently that whenever say router forwarding to a router, router forwarding to a particular host or whatever, whatever it does there should be a resolution to the MAC address. So, uh, finally, it should find out that what is the next stop MAC address and deliver the things. For that we require a protocol called ERP address resolution protocol. So, there are there are some address called MAC address as many of you know that is the hardware address which comes with the network interface and in order to resolve this from IP to MAC we require a address resolution protocol. So, mapping MAC address to and from IP address or ERP and RARP uh, reverse ARP type of things. Uh, so, we have this type of uh, addressing scheme. So, finally, what we look at that IP addresses and different allocation quickly already you have known and seen that uh, that packet forwarding based on the IP prefixes right. So, looking at that uh, that routing routers how it forwards and what we look at this long longest prefix match when there are more than one matching coming up that where, where the longest prefix match is there. So, with this we conclude our today's discussion, we will continue this uh, routing uh, IP routing mechanisms in our subsequent lectures. Thank you.